So you want to get 10,000 miles in Oregon Trail's endless mode. Let's take a look at how you might want to do that. You're going to have to choose your loadout. I chose the farmer because it generates food as you move. You can sell that food later on for money, or you can use the food to keep your characters alive. You're going to have to choose modifiers. I would choose all of the modifiers that make the run easier for you. Deep Sleeper, Slow Zombies, anything on this side is going to make the run easier. You're going to have to select a character. The goal of this run is to generate the survivor skin, which is needed for other things that you want to do in the game, like getting the UFO. I have the king activated, and I'll show you how to do that as part of this. At the beginning of the run, you're going to want to go ahead and kill your party members because they take up food. Once you've killed all your party members and done a bit of scavenging while you're in a low zombie activity area, you'll be well on your way getting through Endless. In your Endless run of Oregon Trail on your way to getting 10,000 miles, there's some things that you want to do every time you top, stop the car. When you're in town, there's a couple extra steps, but these are the things that you want to do every single time. So in town, there's going to be a job board. You want to do hit and run anytime your vehicle needs any sort of repairs whatsoever. There's no downside to doing hit and run. The other ones, there's going to be a difficulty and a chance that you'll fail and a payment, and you want to measure how worth it is to do that thing against how much they're going to pay you. If there's an auto shop, you may want to repair the vehicle by paying for it that way. This time we would do the hit and run rather than that. Uh, but you always want to keep uh, an eye on the cost of the repairs and whether or not it's worth it for the equivalent of scrap that you'd have to put in to do the repairs yourself. You want to be looking for upgrades. This is not one of the top upgrades, uh, but there are some particular upgrades that are going to help you in your endless run. In addition to that, you always want to go talk to Stranger and read what's here. You don't have to read it, you just have to pull up this screen. Pulling this up in enough spots will give you a new skin and, ge and generate skulls for your game. So you want to rest if you need to rest. Here we do. So if you click rest, you can scroll this up and rest for however long you need to. There we go. You'll have to repair the car here if you need to uh, by clicking through the repair mini game. If you can repair the game by doing a job or by uh, doing some other thing, that's also worth it too. You want to buy fuel if possible, if it's for a good price. This is not the best price of fuel in the game, but the fluctuations are not significant throughout the run. So making sure that you buy fuel early on when it's available, as it won't be available in many of the towns as you go. You may need to buy other things, and from time to time you can sell things. One of the important things to do in the, in the run, especially if you do it the way I do by starting off with the farmer, is you want to check sell food and this amount can go up to what I've seen at least is as much as three dollars if you can sell your food for three dollars and you have enough to get by I would definitely sell hundreds and hundreds of food to generate money um, to buy the things the upgrades in particular for the vehicle and for fuel you want to check if you can do some scavenging one of the key indicators of whether or not it's a good time to scavenge is if you're in a city or a town you're going to be able to scavenge more. And the zombie activity is also important. If the zombie activity is low or medium, that's a great time to scavenge. If the zombie activity is you know, anything higher than that, high, deadly, that sort of thing, you might want to stay away from it. In between each activity, it may be worthwhile to click on trade and just see if there's someone who's willing to trade. This person's willing to spare 37 of their ammo for 20, 32 of your food. That's a good trade most of the time, right? Especially when we have the farmer generating food as we go. Um, you know, it's, if it just says you, there's no one to, to encounter, go do other stuff, sleep, that kind of thing, and go back to trade. There may now be someone who's there to trade with you. So in between each activity, this can be particularly important and endless because, you know, you're not going to be able to buy all the tires, batteries, and mufflers you might need. You need to trade for them. You need to trade away food. You need to trade away med kits um, and, uh, and money, uh, though, sometimes ammo, things that you can generate a little bit more uh, than things like fuel and scrap that you, that you need to keep. Let's take a quick look at where my stats were at when I finished my endless 10K run. So by the time that I had finished my 10,000 mile run, I was, for, for a good many of the last um, thousand miles, uh, pretty low on fuel, and I often had to find traders to get fuel for me, but I was pretty solid on scrap for the entirety of the run, and I ended up selling, you know, maybe $2,000 uh, worth of food near the end to pay for some of the other things that I needed.
Um, in particular, I got very lucky and uh, I, I definitely uh, prioritized getting things that would stop the car from breaking down. So we're talking about the super last tires, uh, which, means that, which meant that I had to buy far fewer tires, uh, the never break muffler, very uh, important because we're not having to pay for this um, as we go along, um, and the never break battery. So these, these three things, I essentially didn't have to worry about throughout the run and every time I harvested a muffler, a tire or a battery on the side of the road or at any point in the game, that was essentially adding cash for me to be able to buy fuel, right? Essentially, that was just generating a new form of currency that I could buy fuel with rather than um, backstopping something that I knew was gonna run out over time. Um, I managed to get the yard sale sign. I don't think that that's a bad upgrade. Uh, I don't think that you need to have it throughout the run, but uh, I do think that you need to probably get um, some of these never break items or super last items to be able to stretch your materials throughout the, the run.